Sea Hill is ruining the meta, you might hear occasionally. But if so, why none of the top 16 qualifiers players brought a Sea Hill deck to the tournament? Hello guys, Kung Fu is here and we are looking at the meta that was formed in top 16 qualifiers. Let's see what top pro players brought to the tournament trying to qualify for open number 2 of the Grand Master season. And Sea Hill Dex is ain't it. We have uh, a bunch of lists to go over, uh, so it will be a quick recap, uh, faction by faction. But first, let's see what was brought to the tournament. All six factions were present. People brought uh, Precision Strike and Dead Eye Ambush for Squiretail. It was between Fruits of Isgit and uh, Arachis Swarm for Monsters, Stockpile Siege and Priestess Pinsel Maneuver decks. Of the books, Devotion and Golden Necker versions. Uh, uh, Golden Necker decks and Practitioner Spam for Nilfgaard and Self Damage for Skellige. No Reckless Flurry this time around. So let's not prolong too much uh, and go to the decks immediately. So first on the menu would be Square Tell and leaders were split between Precision Strike and Dead Eye Ambush for Precision Strike, there were basically two uh, ways of building the deck from the pros. First one is the mix of dwarves and elves. So you, you get your good packages of Munro and Zoltan uh, combined with a couple more dwarves. So you, you create the tokens, transform them with a Munro into the berserkers. You can restore some of the armor using Dwarven Chariots. Uh, and yeah, this is Magpie's version. So instead of Iron Guide, Hand Handguided Sword is here. Hand Handguided Sword is uh, a newest updated sword in the game. This replaces Iron Guide, but uh, the card is powerful, especially with the leader where you can occasionally ping enemies unit. You first play it as a 5 damage card answering some threat from opponent or just playing it for carryover the second time if you start a unit in it and if you right click the card it will show you so you basically have to kill something uh, the second time you play it you can damage anything you don't have to deal five damage you can uh, not have a dead blow the unit is still being spawned so a nice carryover card and the control card as well and precision strike yeah it helps uh, setting it uh, setting it up and yeah besides doors you have elf package so vanadine uh, and a waylace combo with uh, seamless you get waylace uh, four of them using alisa and then uh, seamless Clears opponent's side of the board while spawning a, like three point tokens going wide, so you are not playing tall with this deck, unless uh, we are talking about Ring of Favor. And since you are not going tall with the deck, Ornate Sensor is present, uh, combines nicely with Precision Strike. You have one point units in Dwarven Skirmishers, you can ping something uh, with your leader, creating a one. And yeah, Arnade Sensor that swaps the highest and lowest power unit is uh, a scary card sometimes to, to have because sometimes it can break. But if you are staying low and your opponent goes stall with something like uh, Priestess boosting Tridem, Infantry or uh, say Melusine, it's a huge point swing, so you need to be on alert. And this is a deck from Pro Ladder, uh, like you, you will be running into that quite often. Alternative to that is another precision strike list, but it's oriented on dwarfs only, so. The idea behind this list is that uh, you play a bunch of dwarves and one single elf, Philavandral. Philavandral creates a Squirtle special with a provision dictated by where you place it. 
So if you're playing it uh, melee and you're playing it from Isengrim's Council, it auto buffs uh, Fila to 6 and at 6 provisions you have uh, this beautiful Zoltan's company that supports your dwarves. So you have Fila guaranteeing you one uh, Zoltan's company. If you play it from council, you have Zoltan's company from hand. That's a whole bunch of uh, rowdy dwarves because, well, you're playing Zoltan Warrior, you're playing Zoltan Chevet, and you're playing Z Zoltan Scoundrel. That maximizes the output of rowdy dwarves. You get five of them, uh, all armored. So your Brewer hook is happy to see that Brewer was nerfed a bit in the recent patch but still if you are running full dwarf package you have uh, the ability to stack some armor onto it and all of your tokens are armored plus uh, dwarven chariots and dwarven agitators are providing you with the extra armor source yeah and Brewer unanswered is just straight up winning you around and then you still have the Zoltan Warrior Moonrock package uh, with uh, Dwarven Berserkers and since you are swarming quite a lot Mahakam Guards that buff by the number of doors on the row and Zoltan Scoundrel playing for 13 and nice additions since we are talking about Precision Strike Arnade Sensor is here people have been bringing this deck to a blue coin mostly if I looked uh, at the bracket correctly of course uh, we having a meta with Golden Necker Tempo decks and monsters uh, Nilfgaard have been using Golden Necker. Uh, for those decks you want the blue coin advantage because you want to buff your Iron Dite. As we can see this deck is also running Iron Dite. Uh, Tempus should be sufficient enough. And you are going with uh, one of your like, Brewer or Zoltan Moonrock packages uh, all out with that, so you should be staying ahead. So those are two Precision Strike decks. Sadly no Shiro, you might know me as uh, Shiro Concasseur, but yeah, that card hasn't seen any competitive play recently. Uh, let's move to the last uh, iteration of Squirtle deck that was brought to the tournament. And it's pure elves. There was a bit of variety. I think TLG's uh, Knerp has brought uh, Great Oak instead of Heatwave, but uh, the plan is the same as for Vanadine pack Vanadine seamless package ever. You play your Vanadine, create Waylays, put them back into into the deck with Alisa play five Waylays with seamless because you get one extra with Fain Death. So. That's a devastating play. Other than that, you try to survive with some bronze elves, uh, sword ma elven swordmaster engines, uh, and then uh, some controlly elves. You have an elf payoff with Isengrim, you have uh, Yavin for damage on, of one row of elves, and then Vernusel as well, you can play her melee for all the damage and board wipe or for swarm value you have seen this deck let's be fair the uh, elves the pure elf deck is uh, existing in grand for ages now it was radea deck at one point now it's a uh, non-radea version and yeah you also run a uh, saber here so on blue coin you can play your scenario and proc the first chapter immediately. It's what a lot of players have been doing. Provides you with a nice tempo and yeah that's it for square tail. Precision strike, dwarf elves mixture or pure elves. All three decks have been present on the ladder so the link for, uh, for the deck list will be in the video description below. While you are going there, also don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. You know the drill helps uh, supporting the, the channel. Uh, so moving on, second faction that was present is uh, monsters. For monsters it's mostly relics. You can see Araka Swarm list in a second, but uh, that, the, uh, there was only one player who brought it. Mostly it's uh, 
uh, relics with golden acre some uh, some variations with uh, with the cards like Lerio was uh, running necromancy operator but majority of players uh, opted into the more common version we are looking at the list by Kerberton and it it is uh, running a feature card, Summon in Circle, you might have missed the notice, uh, shows you cards in order. So if you remember how uh, Deadman's stunt was working, or you know how Maxi is working, showing you the deck in the correct order, Summon in Circle does the same. The tooltips are not updated at the moment, but Project uh, CD Project Red uh, officially communicated that the change uh, gonna stay, so we get a bug transformed into a feature unintended buff to a card uh, so be it don't mind it for eight provision card is uh, not free to add into your uh, deck but yeah you can summon uh, like a nine, nine point card card also has resilience so you can click it stay save it for next round and you get the nine point tempo with griffin or whatever you missed uh, th this card is summoning so you're not getting your uh, city nova carried over you cannot cheat that much but uh, yeah and other than that you know the relics they do play bronze uh, self eaters and Witch's Apprentices Incubus has been pretty sweet uh, recently because uh, some thinners like New Guardian Mage Assassins have been or uh, Square Tales uh, Siege guys, the one point tokens have been buffed to five provisions and you can trade uh, you, you can summon those from opponent's deck so one two points for them we are playing a six that summons a nine so that's a huge point swing other than that you have the crown package and yeah since it's a golden necker deck with a uh, with some tempo uh, although this version is not running roach and doggo but uh, you can find the builds once again in the video description with roach and doggo you put enough tempo to stay ahead the relics uh, and fruits of Isgit is known for that those types of decks so iron diet is of course present here and we can look at the amount of specials for uh for golden necker iron diet Nagelfar, Surrender. Surrender probably is more of a tournament choice, although if you're facing a lot of Elves, Dwarfs, Sapphire Sworn on the ladder, and by Fire Sworn I mean Devotion Syndicate running the bronze package, you can uh, surrender some opponents quite freely. So that would be the blue coin deck for the most of the time. You play your uh, griffins, you, you have megascopes, you try to develop something into the graveyard. Once again, griffins, gynkeans, or so some engines you, that you will be bringing back with incubus. You need to be precise with your mulligans to have a golden necker. Golden necker, if you're not aware, is the card that plays a special a unit, a special and artifact in that order, so you don't want to fuck it up with artifacts because, uh, well, if you don't have a bronze unit on the board, you might break your megascope, so the sequencing should be precise. And since you are running only one, two, three specials, uh, you, you you can't play all, them, all of them in round one, otherwise problems will arise. And then for the next uh, monster deck, we had Arachas Swarm. Arachas Swarm is a second best leader probably, or first best leader for Ornate Sensor. I think Precision Strike is of course better because you can kill opponents once and play it in the same turn. But yeah, Ornate Sensor is there for point swing. It's another Golden Necker deck that relies on swarming besides the Golden Necker uh, Roach. Um, Sneakers uh, tempo. Uh, it relies on swarming with Arachasness, spontaneous evolutions, uh, leader, leader's passive, and yeah, it has a payoff of bone talismans and chimeras here. 
plus uh, Zoltan and Tarakas Behemoth buff in your one. So this is not a glusty version. This is a version that runs uh, swarming cards uh, that buff everything on the board. And we're at, if you haven't seen this card in a while, it is consuming units. And now when you click it, it fills the rows, so you're not losing any buff. So yeah, the card has been recently changed. Uh, if you miss that, you can consider this uh, or your consumed decks as well. So that's monsters. Uh, monsters is a pure golden necker faction at the moment, unlike Squirtle that we've seen wants to run expensive cards, Seamless, Zoltan, Munro, and consistency cards like uh, Oniromancy. Monsters don't care that much, monsters go golden necker. Moving on, NR. NR Siege was brought by two players. Siege deck is uh, known for pinging damage uh, with Ballistas, Cargo Ballistas, and then a huge finisher with uh, Hansel pulling uh, Fault Sprite into a Soldier Pocket. Uh, some of the cards are, of course, bugged at the moment, so let me restart. It has control, doesn't have Heat Wave but has Margarita, Muzzle, and then pinging damage. Of course, you are at times running into a problem of like killing something like Melusine, but uh, you can ping her down. You can uh, use some leader charges and maybe set up a Muzzle on uh, enemy threat. Enemy threat. So yeah, another deck that was uh, prevalent past previous seasons, nowadays majority of players play everyone's favorite Priestess deck. Priestess deck with a huge consistency because of pincer maneuver, of all the draw effects and thinning. Uh, I've reviewed this deck multiple times on the, three, uh, on the YouTube, my YouTube channel, so you might have seen it, you might have seen it uh, on the ladder, whenever you look, the Priestesses are there. For, still at four provisions, recently nerfed, so that they need to be boosted uh, and be inspired to gain zeal. It's not a big problem. You have Istred that buffs cards. We have uh, double Witcher Mentor, and most importantly, Card Seven is here. A location that uh, provides you with another uh, Griffin Witcher Mentor. The card that I revealed, by the way, thank you City Project Red for that opportunity over a year ago. Uh, sadly, there are less cards to reveal nowadays for content creators, so... And harder to get in. But yeah, Kyr Seren's uh, order ability allows you to boost a unit in your deck by 3, so you choose your best um, Priestess with more charges and send it back into the deck, click Kyr Seren, buff it up, and then pull it out. So every time you send the scout back into the deck, it gains three charges, it combines nicely with uh, Tridem. If you are into that, you can uh, run Trollolo as well. Trollolo gains uh, a point per each charge used from the Traveling Priestess. And yeah, you try to survive while mulliganing, while uh, Rotating your deck by having uh, Arrow Ballistas, uh, Reinforced Ballistas. Uh, this version is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, not running Arrow Ballistas, but you can have those as well. You have Fault Sprite, your leader provides you with Soldier Pocket, you also have uh, Radovid, you also have uh, Siege Masters jumping out, so should find a pocket for that to activate every two turns. You have thinning from Hubert, and the most uh, not the most important card, but one thing to consider is that uh, you might get over tint, and that's the the reason some of the players are playing Taller. because this card allows you to choose: do you want to thin one more card or? Are you okay without it? Taller has an order, so if you have your opponent uh, running uh, Scoundrel that pulls a bronze from your deck, or if you have uh, uh, 
Wilgeforce, Cantarell, and Nilfgaard players uh, that you are running into, Tyler prevents that thinning, and uh, you are potentially not breaking your Vernon Rush play. Uh, Vernon, of course, is used uh, in this deck because you thin exactly two, two cards, so you get one Tridem, one Priestess in deck, you set it up with Leader, and then you finish with uh, Vernon Rush. Thing to consider uh, playing this deck, if you are against Skellige, you might want to play uh, Vernon Rush early, because Priestesses uh, have a tendency to die to Arnagat pulled from the compass. So play around that if possible. Although I haven't seen that much magic compass nowadays, but yeah, you can find the deck review in the uh, like and gameplay in the previous recordings on this YouTube channel. Moving on, we cover three of six factions. Syndicate, Syndicate is simple. Syndicate is, uh, this is one outstanding deck that is uh, outlier. Golden Necker Syndicate that runs a lot of poison. The, I, I have a slight problem with the deck because, well, it tends to over, over profit quite often because uh, you are running only Salamandra Hideout and Candle. So Candle is 5 profit, if you didn't find it, you pull it. And your specials are Fish decks, uh, so that's another 4 profit card. You quite often uh, have some coins in your bank already, so your bank overflows and you are not getting anything for it. But yeah, once again Tempo, Iron Diet, Ring of Favor. That was slightly nerfed, but uh, still is a consideration for all the Golden Necker decks. If you are not running a s Ornate Sensor especially. You have a point slap with uh, Savola in the end if you are in a short round. Also your Iron Dite probably is quite big. So you, you slap those points with, uh, with Dock and uh, Horse in round 1. Uh, you have the Poison Brothers combo, Gellert uh, poisoning all the tokens and disciples, and Roland trying to, to reap the money from all the poisoning happening, so tempo is quite scary. Uh, and it's more consistent in terms of playing your golds compared to the next deck, and this is uh, the, the normal most popular deck that was brought to the tournament. I think this is Kerpeton's version, but uh, Kerpeton will be playing, by the way, versus Lerio. So that's your update for first candidate to get uh, into the open number two, either Lerio or Kerpeton. But yeah, you play Heavy Gold, uh, Heavy Gold's Professor, Jacques, uh, Cyrus, King of Beggars is here to return you the coins that you play, that you pay. And no Savola in this list, no real need to. Uh, you have better golds anyway, Savola is not the best spender. And you have uh, Conjurer Scandal, you have Gellert, you have uh, Disciples for a good 1 to 2 spending. Or like, 1 coin, 2 points spending. Uh, bronze package is... Uh, almost identical for all the versions. There was uh, there were different iterations with like second poison brother being present, some people not running uh, Jack if I'm not mistaken, but yeah that, that's quite common. But bronzes, disciples with inquisitors combined for a strong package for bronze cards, cards. you get some coins from mutant makers, you are devotion so an obvious choice. Uh, I think Mutants Makers are more popular than Tax Collectors. Because Tax, tax Collectors tend to die quite easily. And you are not jackpot, so you cannot uh, over profit from them and buff the cards themselves. And yeah, then there is a cheap for provision cards with Tribute Zero because of, of, the, of the book's ability. The problem is the, your consistency. Can you find all your golds with only bank as a, as a tutor? 
If not, if you are missing like uh, Hamelfart or Philippa, or have to fish for Philippa from the bank, you are quite sad, so that's the reason to switch to a Golden Acre deck, but if you are good at drawing cards, uh, this is your way to go with this Indicate. Nobody is playing anything else. And then uh, Nilfgaard and Skellige are left. Let's go for the Skellige for a ca uh, fast recap. Uh, cards uh, having wrong pictures to them. So here we are. The self damage. Skellige, Earth and Ritual was the only deck brought for Skellige if I'm not mistaken. Everyone opted for this leader. So no getting 8th uh, self damage this time around. And yeah, you bring this deck to a blue coin, most likely you have your um, Mellow side. you have your bronze package with Drakars, uh, Svolbot Priest, Hermits, uh, Turshak uh, Veterans, and then you put your Mellow sign, grow the carry over into the next round, and yeah, Sigvald, still 7 provisions. Still a very powerful card. You are running double Martrom, you have Knut to damage him every turn. Sigvald, of course, uh, doesn't get the damage from Knut and uh, Martroms. Instead, he gets the bleeding. And then you can also click him on order, purify self and buff uh, by the amount of bleed on himself. And you're damaging some token on your side of the board, most likely. So. A very powerful card, a card deserving that you are running a lock removal in your deck as well, and a card that you might want to bring a couple of times out uh, of your graveyard. If, you are. if your Mellow Sign is not that big or got heat waved, you are opting for Sigvald and Knut package for the winning strategy. So that deck made it to the final stage. I think both uh, finalists made it with the same lineup. Relicts, Devotion Syndicate, Self Damage, and then Priestess deck. So the final will potentially consist of the mirror matches or cross mirrors, whatever you call them, when one faction faces another and then the flip happens in the next match because uh, yeah. Same decks that tend to to beat this similar decks that your opponent beat you with. So yeah, that's our sand ritual, and now we are switching to the last one. Gonna finish it up in under thirty minutes, right, for the YouTube video. Um, and uh, it's been taking a bit longer than I expected already. So let's see, quite a lot of decks. That shows that the meta for the tournament potentially is healthy. People do not enjoy playing a lot of Golden Neckers, but we also seen here that a lot of non-Golden Neckers has been brought. Earth and Ritual, Devotion Syndicate, and then uh, Squirtle decks plus Priestess and Siege. So. Let's start from the outliers here once again. Uh, Infernail decided to bring the practitioner spam that creates a bunch of mushy truffles on top of your deck. We've seen this deck in action during the open number one. Everyone acted surprised. Uh, also, the pictures are screwed up again. So here we are. Here we are. You try to create as many practitioners as possible, assimilate engines, maybe help you to survive round one, but you don't mind going down a card or two, because this deck is all about getting your combo off. If the combo doesn't work, if all your practitioners are getting killed, you are struggling with winning, but yeah, the idea is you create a uh, bunch of practitioners, you have two from hand, you have Operator, you have Megascopes, you have uh, Idaran, so you hope to play and stick 6 to 10 of practitioners, usually it's less, because well, you need to find everything and you also need some payoff cards like Wilkefort's Renegade. Renegade swaps a card from your opponent's graveyard with a card with, or from your hand. So basically you want to send Masha Truffle into the graveyard and click all your practitioners. Then you have a bunch of Masha Truffles on your top deck. You can play them all as a carryover in round two. 
And in round three, you click all the Masha Truffles. That's a rundown of the deck. Does it work out every time? Is it worth it to play all the Masha Truffles in round two if you went cards down? Sometimes not, sometimes yet. Yes, uh, depends on what your opponent have been doing in round one, what is left for them to fight with in round three, if there is a round three. But uh, majority of players uh, who brought Nilfgaard decided to go for two similar decks. It's either Imprisonment or Tactical Decision with Golden Necker. Tempo, Tempo, Tempo. This version is Frail Cost, if I'm not mistaken, so he decided to opt in for Swears. Disciples in uh, Syndicate is the first thing that comes to mind that you might want to eliminate with Swears, a 10 point uh, swing that also removes uh, a, a good spender, but there are probably other considerations uh, if you look at the, at the decks we just reviewed. So the idea is you play Golden Naker, uh, you run a bunch of specials and artifacts for that, Megascopes, Mysterious Boxes, Location, you have Imperial Diplomacies, and then Invo Iron Diet for specials. And then you, you put it back into the deck using Asaya. This deck is missing um, Alisa. We probably can find Alisa in the tactical decision list. So yeah, you put it back. You might put Golden Necker back into the deck twice using those two. And then yeah, you rely on the Golden Necker. Uh, Carrying. Sometimes it uh, backfires, shows you Megascope with, when you don't have bronzes, so once again pay attention. Uh, you have 8 point and 7 point uh, soldiers to Megascope on. Uh, you also have for this deck Tactical Decision combining with Snowdrop and Doidric. Imprisonment was a bit different because, well, you don't have the synergy with, uh, with the leader, so you're not running Snowdrop. But that's the main idea of the deck Tempo Ahead. Buff up your Iron Diet, steal your opponent's good card. You can go with Cantarella and aim at stealing your opponent's Iron Diet, for example. Zoltan, uh, Jacques, Hamelfart. There are there is a bunch of options for you to steal. So this is the state of Nilgard at the moment. Two of those Golden Akins there, and that's uh, wrapping up our. Uh, deck review we can look at the bracket uh, it's gonna happen in some hour or two no what are you doing this is a disaster but yeah here we are so the bracket is that in the top bracket final we have Lerio versus uh, Kerpaten also known as Turbo Chim Slicer uh, they are fighting for one direct spot and the loser of the final goes to the loser's bracket uh, who awaits uh, and will be waiting for Denira, Gandalf, Knerr or Freilkos to join them for another fight for the second spot on the Open. So that's your review of what pro players are running. Thanks for watching, thanks for following, subscribing. If you did that, you can check the streams on Twitch. And uh, what else? I guess there is not much to talk about uh, in terms of the deck list. Uh, if you don't know where to find the decks, I can show you. You can go to the players menu here and choose any of the decks you wish to open and look through. So we didn't cover some of the builds. The, the Infernail def definitely wins the, the prize for the most uh, spicy lineup with uh, Arachis Swarm and Imposter. Uh, majority of the players, as I said, yeah, Kerpeten and Lerio are finalists and you can see that they are running the same leaders, uh, a bit of variance on some of the cards. So good luck with, uh, to all the players competing. Leave a comment if you have any questions or comments about the lineups. Gonna do some deck reviews and deck videos uh, based on 
on the lineups that people brought in the following weeks. So don't miss those. If you have any more questions about decks, those might be cleared up in the gameplay or deck review videos. And yeah, see ya in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.